Next, we're going to be looking at some tips and tricks for working with longer hair inside of XGen. So what we want to do is we want to have a new hair description added to our character that's going to basically try to match the overall look and feel that I have in this modeled geometry. And this is going to be done using a tube groom workflow. So this gives us a very art directable approach to generating the guides that ultimately drive our instant splines for our longer hair. So let's go ahead and select a piece of geometry, which is our character's scalp. And you'll notice that I've limited the number of faces. This is a good thing for workflow to always try to have the least number of faces that you're going to use to generate your descriptions from. And we're going to go and create a new description for that selection. And we'll call it hair3. And we'll put this in the folder called Sven for the collection. And it's going to be a spline for long hair, and we're going to be placing this using guides. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to get some guides into our scene. So instead of using the drop guide button or add guide button, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the primitives tab inside of the primitives attributes and click the tube groom button. So this is going to give me a widget that will allow me to load in all the geometry that was modeled off to generate this, these tubes. Notice that this geometry is open on both ends. So it's open on this end and it's also open on, on if we hit our 4 key there, you can see on the back side. So there, there are essentially tubes that are opened on both ends there and they're very close to the geometry that we're trying to have the guides generated from. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and grab every piece that we want to have added in as a tube. So we'll grab these back guys too. And with that done, all we have to do is go ahead and click the button here to load the list into the tubes column. So now we can go ahead and click our test button and it's going to give us a representation of a little X where each guide is going to get added as well as a number here. So it's going to add guides around the outside edge of each of, each of these tubes and a guide down the middle of each of the tubes the way I currently have it set, or a few guides down the middle of each of the tubes where I currently have it set. So that's a little bit high as far as the guide number. I'm going to go ahead and increase this number and hit the test button one more time and you'll see that's going to lower the overall number of guides down a little bit. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and we'll hit the generate button. So what Maya is going to do now is it's going to go through and generate our guides for us. And it's also going to save out a region map for each one of these tubes. And the region maps are useful because they allow us to have good control over what instance geometry is going to get controlled by which guides be based on those region maps. So it's really pretty awesome. So what we've got shown in our viewport now is obviously the instance geometry got added in there. And if we start to increase the, uh, the overall density of those guys, you'll start to see, see what they look like. So we'll get that density up a little bit higher. Maybe we'll drop down that width to 0.05. And we'll give it a little bit of taper and a little bit of taper start. So one problem that we have is even though the instance geometry is kind of following those tube grooms pretty well, it's actually being generated from everywhere on that scalp. So we want to isolate where that hair can grow from. And this is something that's really easy to do inside of Maya by just simply painting this mask file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab all of our tubes. And we're going to grab our scalp. Let's grab our tubes and we'll grab our scalp. And we'll jump into our view selected mode. And we'll just grab this guy and we'll jump in here and say create map. So we're going to create a black map and we're going to paint where we want the hair to actually come from. So we'll jump into our 3D paint tool. So make sure that your brush profile type is set to be a solid brush. These gradient brushes actually go to a gradient all the way to the very center point. So if you don't use a solid brush, the mask files can get a little, a little flaky. So again, we want to paint with a value of white where we want to generate that hair from. So we can close that guy down and go through here and just start adding in. And I'll just increase my brush size to be pretty broad with my painting here in this, this first pass. And then I'll go back and cut it back in using my smaller brush holding down my control key. So I'm just going to try to, you know, broadly get the overall effect that we want to have happen here pretty quickly. And then decrease that brush size and do some some cutback work holding down that control key. So we'll just kind of bleed that guy back and 
bleed that guy back a little bit there. And again, I don't need to be too precise with this. This is more about the concept than the actual uh, the actual end result here. So that looks pretty good. Happy with that. So just like we did before, you know, these are um, these are UV-based textures until we hit the save button. As soon as we hit the save button, it becomes a P-text texture. And if we get out of our isolate select mode, you can see now our hair is being limited to where it's growing from based on that mask file that we just painted, which is uh, exactly what we want to have happen. So the next thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and hide those tubes. We don't need to see those guys anymore. We want to begin working with those region maps a little bit more to get a good representation as to where they actually exist. So if we jump back to our XGen description, you know, I mentioned the fact that that region map was saved out for me automatically. What we're going to do is we're going to go to that preview output tab and we're going to start to change our, our guide colors to, um, to actually be driven by that region map. So this is something that's pretty easy to do because that region map is already a ptext file. So what we're going to do is we're going to say load expression. Remember I talked about the fact that everything in Maya with XGen is actually being an expression, whether it's a map or a slider or a color value. They're all made and all the UI is made with expressions. So we have a sample expression under the UI setting for loading ptext maps. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that guy. And you can see those guides went to black, right? Because we haven't mapped anything into that directory right now. It's, it's kind of a blank directory. So if we just browse out to, uh, to where we saved out that Sven directory, which is in this guy, Maya's already made a region map for me. I just need to load it and point this to it. So inside of Sven, in hair 3 in region, if we hit select, you'll now see that each guide, based on that tube where those guides were derived from, has unique colors. So that means any hair that is in that region is going to, any primitive splines that are within that region are going to be controlled by those curves with the same color. So that's pretty cool. Now we could take this same expression that we're using to drive our guides and have that by copying it, I just hit control C on that guy, also drive our primitive color. And again, I talked about this in that first example where you might have the primitive color being driven by something like a region map and the shader color is being driven by something else that the output renderer is going to use. So this is a perfect example of that. So we're going to go ahead and see, uh, let's load this expression window up and we'll add into that that expression that we just copied and say accept. And now you can see that our hair we're getting this nice visual representation as to which hair is going to be controlled by which guides and which hair is going to be in which region. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is if we hide that preview of that hair and we go back to our Add Guides button and I start to drag this around, you'll see that little guide sort of lagging behind my cursor or hopefully the Camtasia is picking that up. And the guide is actually getting color changed to give me a good visual representation as to where I'm going to add in more detail where I'm going to add another groomable spline or an, where I'm going to add another guide curve that's going to basically adjust the overall effect of, of that hair and give me more control of it in that region. And you'll see that when I let go of that button, it adds in that new guide and that guide interpolates between all of its neighbors. So that visual feedback and that color feedback is really quite useful when you're working with your hair inside of Maya in Viewport 2.0. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to further modify this hair using modifiers. So a couple things about modifiers. You always want to start with broad detail and go to finer detail, whether you're dealing with clumps or noise. You want to start with broad detail and go to finer detail. And another thing that's worth mentioning is the clumping effects always happen first. After that, then things like all the other effects you can reorder, but the clumping effects are always going to be at the front of the list no matter what you do. So we're going to go ahead and work that way up and just add the clumps first anyway. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab our first clumping. And when you generate a clump, you need to specify how big that clump is going to be. How big is the clumping going to be? So the first thing you got to do is go down to your setup parameters in the setup maps. And we can use either um, a density value to generate this or we can just use our guide curve. So if we hit generate, this is with a density of 1. That's how big my clumps are going to be. Obviously, if I increase the density and hit generate one more time, we'd get finer clumps. What I want to do is I want those clumps to actually be driven from the guide. So when I click that guide button, it's going to go ahead and put a clump everywhere there was a guide curve. 
So with that done, we can go ahead and save that out. And you can see now what we have is we have this nice clumping happening. So there's no scaling effect happening at the root, and it's scaling down to a value of 0 at the tip. Inside of the clump, there is control for noise and cut and copy effects. These are happening at the clump level. So if we go to cut and we add in a random slider or a random expression, I'll just type rand, enter, 0 to 3 or 4, and hit accept. This is actually happening at the clump level. So we're cutting that down at the clump level as opposed to cutting at the individual instance spline level, which would happen if we did a cut effect outside of the clumping. So keep in mind that the effects that you see inside of clumping will behave differently than if they were individual effects layered after the clump. This happens actually to the whole clump, essentially. So the other thing that we might want to do is add a little bit of noise to this guy. So if we give it a, a noise, um, we'll put a noise value of 1 in there. We'll give it a frequency of something that's kind of low, like a value of 1. This is going to start to just break this up here a little bit. We'll add that noise to the uh, to the tips of our of our hair. And right now, we're not seeing a lot of detail added in, and that's because there's not that many CVs on this. So we're going to increase the CVs so that we can start to capture some of that finer detail. You know, maybe put this up to something like 40, and it'll start to capture all that finer detail that we've added into this guy. So we've got this sort of noise effect happening, and we've got that clumping effect happening. Now, I don't really like the clumping scaling down to a value of 0 on that, on that tip, so we're just going to increase that a little bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll drop this noise down a little bit. I don't want that noise to be that that extreme, but I do want it to be introduced lower into the into the into the hair here. So we want to have just a little subtle wave happening in those clumps, and that little bit of um, scaling effect happening as they sort of scale down toward the tips. And we've got a little bit of random cutting happening here. That might be a little extreme. We'll put that to a value of one. And we'll re-execute that guy out. So with that done, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another set of clumping. Now remember I said you always want to work from broad detail to fine detail, so this next clump that we're going to add is going to be a little bit smaller, and we're going to do some other effects with it. So we'll go ahead and we'll add another clumping effect on top, so we're kind of layering clumps on top of each other. So once we get that new clump on there, we need to go set up our maps again, like I said before, and what we're going to do is we're going to increase the density of this guy, We'll hit generate on that, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's going to be, I like that density value there. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that out. And at any time, if I want to get a preview of what that clump is actually looking like, I can turn color preview on. So you can see that's really pretty subtle clumps that we've added into that guy. So we've got broad clumps with some finer sub clumps added onto it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this offset effect to start to add in, I'm sorry, we're going to use the offset effect to add in a little bit of, um, kind of pull out in the middle range right here. So if I start to increase this offset, you can see there's zero effect at the root and zero effect at the tip. But if I add in a value of like 0.5 here, you're going to see that it's going to start to pull these guys out in that middle range and sort of kind of plump those guys out a little bit in that middle range. So it just sort of makes it kind of weird and wavy in, in that middle range, which I kind of like. So after that's done, we can go ahead and start to add in maybe a cut effect. So this cut effect that we add outside of the clumping is actually going to be at a per, um, per instance level or a per primitive level. So if we put this to a value of like, uh, I don't know, 1.2 or 2.2, it's going to start to trim those hairs back a little bit. Maybe we'll jump into this clumping here and we'll, we'll just not have that scale all the way down to a value of zero. That's a little extreme. That's cool, I like that. And we can turn off that color preview when we don't need to see that anymore. So we just have the region preview happening there now. So the last thing that we're going to do is I'm going to add on one more noise just to make the hair kind of frizzy or kinky or something like that. So I talked about you want to work from broad detail to fine detail. So with noise, you want to work from kind of low frequency to high frequency. So we've already got sort of a low frequency wave happening at the clump level. So what we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a high frequency noise that happens on a per strand basis that kind of goes across the whole head, not just at a clump level. So that noise comes in. It's got a frequency of a value of 1. We could increase that up to something even higher, like a value of 2. And you can see that it's really frizzing the tips of the hair because it's going from zero effect to full effect at the end or the, the tips of the hair. So I'm just, just going to turn that magnitude down. I like it going from tip to end, but I don't want it to be 
quite that extreme. I just want to have it be a little bit less a little bit less crazy there. And obviously if we put this up to something like, you know, a value of five, right? It's gonna to get totally nuts and blow that hair out on the ends, right? So lots of control that you have using these modifiers to really fine tune the look and feel of your of your hair. And again, the concepts are always the same. You work from broad detail to small detail, high frequent or low frequency to high frequency. It's all sort of the same, the same ideas here. So at any given time, if I want to, I can go ahead and go back to my primitives and get rid of that color information that we're using in our preview. So you know what? I'm just going to say, let's load a new expression, sample, UI, and we'll just load um, load a gray or a black. doesn't really matter. It's going to give me a color, color slider back to that guy for our primitive preview, and then we can just sort of drop that down to a very low res, and we can hide the overall guides. We don't need to see those anymore. So those are just a couple of examples of things that you can do with, um, with XGen for working with longer hair inside of Maya 2015.